Hi, everybody. Hello, ladies. Hi. Welcome, 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 family, to another exciting episode of Mom's Pearls. My name is Leah, and I am so excited to be here today with my sisters in Christ, Sister Brenda and Sister Hi. Yolanda. Hello, girls. Hey. We are all moms, and we are all sisters in Christ. And today, we will be talking to you guys about technology addiction. Yeah. Don't cut us off. Don't cut us off because I know some of y'all feel like that's a straight dagger to the heart. We're not coming for your heart, okay? <laughs> but we are going to talk about it today because it's everywhere. We all interact with it. We all have something to do with it. A lot of us have these little things that we keep blue <laughs> like this right here. So we are going to have a lot of fun discussing the pros, the cons, the benefits, you know, about it. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Mom's Pearls. Mom's Pearls. Mom's Pearls. Hey, welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. So no, we don't want you to turn us off because we are using technology. <laughs> yes, we are going to discuss the pros and the cons. One pro is that we get to interact with you guys every week. Hey, family. Yay. Yes, so there are pros and cons. So that was one pro and I have another one. So another pro is that we connect. We're connecting all over the world with technology and that's what i love yes. about technology is that we can connect when my husband is on his trips even though he's not here in the house we can still video chat him and the kids and we go to sleep with a little more peace and ease because we were able to see daddy before we went to bed so ladies um what pros and con what let's start with the pros we'll go with the pros i love that i actually love that pro and her husband's military so it's not just when he's out of town but i mean when he's across the country you know they can do all that stuff so i love it for that same reason especially like with our older people you know before you have to do a phone call or something like that and sometimes they might still especially in COVID times still feel like they were alone but now actually getting to see face to face see the grandkids still running around all that stuff like that yes. you know I think that's really exciting and I think too just like she was saying you know allowing us to meet new people all over the world you know in ministry it serves an extra bonus because yes. we get to minister to people like never yes. before we're on Facebook we're on Instagram you know we're opening you know Jesus up to everybody you know making sure people know he's available to us all so I really think that those are um those are some really great um pros. And I think too, for me personally, it really helps things become a lot more efficient. You know, vacuum cleaners, dishwashers, praise Jesus, you know, all of those things when it comes to technology, Alexa, everything, sign me up. You know, my husband will be like, Did you use this app or use it? We'll do this, we'll get on this app, all that kind of stuff like that, you know, to try to make our lives a lot more easier and just um more time efficient. So yes, I love it. Yes, like that. I love that. Efficiency. We have we have a lot of kids over here, so we have to be efficient with our time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you sister Brandon? oh i you know what you both you ladies say i love it you know especially with the pandemic we were able to stay in touch with the with mm -hmm. the family you know the grandkids that helped um mental a lot you know because you were still with your family even though physically you weren't with them and recently right. we did a, a big birthday for my son and my nephew and we did a zoom so all the family that lives out of town they, were, they all came on Zoom. They was able to be a part where we sang happy birthday. It made it even more special. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is good like that. I also love it that I pay my bills. I don't have to worry <laughs> about getting no stamps, mail it out. Oh, is it going to get there in time? It's going to be late. Coordinate mailing it with me getting paid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just yes. pick up my phone. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And everything is done. Bills are paid, like voila. And then the rest of them, they just come out automatically. So these are the good things, the good reasons, you know, like Amazon. We could just uh -huh. order what I need, like bam, boom, it's at the door. Those are the good reasons that I like. Yes, we were able yes. to stay in church during the pandemic, you know, still fellowship and worship. And it, you know, it has, it does have a lot of good good reasons good, yes good yes. 
you had we've had we've done birthday parties on zoom we even had yes. listen we had a family <laughs> reunion on zoom y'all it yes. was amazing <laughs> it was so much fun to even to just do that to even think to do that and that was amazing but sister Brenda, you said the amazon prime so now what? we're gonna switch to the cons on it because the amazon <laughs> prime can be <laughs> good and bad because i have like yes. two thousand dollars worth of stuff in my saved in my amazon card that i want it's like so but i haven't purchased it yet i haven't purchased it lord because i don't know what kind of card i can put that on so why can't i get it all <laughs> but a con is one of my cons is that it can interfere with our face-to-face -face. so the technology we are so we get so caught up in reaching people on the um, to the different corners of the earth that we neglect those who are sitting right next to us True. so that's that's my major con with technology I, like I have a big one I have a real big one that irks me and I'm oh. sure fam out there this has happened to you you are in the store and you get to the cash register and their computers are down so oh, you man. can't you can't make your purchase you stand there a whole lot of people I got things to do places to go I need what's in this cart right now. And then you're going to tell me, oh, well, you have to wait. No, I don't have to wait. Like, listen, you can't hit a manual button and press it up the old fashioned way <laughs> and bring it, let that drawer open up. And, or you just take my card, let me just wipe. Like, no. It's so it, it is inefficient like that a lot of times. A lot of times, even online, like I'm trying to pay my bills or the site or it won't come up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been times where the cell phone companies have had issues and everybody under that company, their phone isn't working for the day. So right. there are big major glitches that do come in with modern technology. I agree. Yeah. And then it's not efficient anymore, right? Then it's using right. up your time because now you yes. got to figure out, okay, how do I get out of this store and still get what I need? Am I trying to find the next store? What do I do? You know, all of that. So I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, one of the major issues that I have with technology is just that while we're trying to make it available for everybody, you know, there are still people that don't have regular access to it. So, you know, sure. those that really can't afford to have regular access to it. And then the, those that might be a little bit older that don't really know how to navigate it. And, mm -hmm. you know, so yes. I think it's... Um, it's one of the things that we still really have to consider is how do we still make that same information available to those that might not have access to technology. So I think that's something that's still a work in progress. And until then, we still have to be patient with those individuals and we still have to provide that very necessary and essential information because it's important. So, you know, technology, oh, it has its place, but it definitely has pros and cons for me. <laughs> it does. Yes. And because we discuss life's questions with a biblical perspective, I have a scripture for you, family. So I have 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Technology is common to man. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make way for escape that you may be able to bear it. So there's so much we can do with technology, but let's not make it so that we're neglecting the things that are in our, our immediate space where we can touch. Let's not make it a temptation. We have to remain balanced in everything that we do. If you need help balancing it, you can set a timer for your social media, First, pray to God and ask him to give you wisdom on how to deal with this thing. I'm, it may sound trivial, but I'm being for real. Go to God and ask for yes. wisdom because he'll provide it. He'll show you how you can cut that out and show you how it's it's impacting your life negatively. So, so you can set a timer. You can, once you're done with it for the day, you shut the app down, log out. So it'll be more tedious for you to get back into it. And it may say, all right, I don't want to do that. But let's just be smart about it. We're going <laughs> to that timers we're going to be balanced and we're going to do this thing in a way that we that it's not going to overtake our lives but it can still yes. be like leah said beneficial all right family that was awesome so we want to keep on talking about this topic so let's switch to the impact of technology on our churches in our homes you know let's talk about ways that it's made things better technically like we were saying earlier Sometimes it's made things worse, <clears throat> excuse me. So one of the things that I think of 
when it comes to the impact of technology is really on our churches. So I know, like we were saying earlier, you know, it opened up a lot of doors, you know, for us to be able to keep church open first, which was our primary goal. Yes. We were able to still be able to keep church open. But then too, we were able to spread our message, you know, across platforms and avenues that we maybe hadn't even thought of before. Like, oh, let's do this. Let's expand in this area. Let's do this. And I mean, people, you know, it's been taken to so many different levels. There's children's church on Zoom. There's there's, um, you know, Sunday school, there's all these live lessons that are available. There's so many things on technology that have been made better during this season. And then too, I think that um, one of the impactful things for me was just this phone, this phone, you know, I'm able to get on my Bible app and I'm still in church. I'm still with it. Da, 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 da. But, you know, it was like, um, I had heard somebody say a while ago, they were like, you know, I just, it's, it's not church to me or something without having just the, the flipping of the pages. And I was like, oh, I don't have no flipping of pages. I want flipping of pages too. I want to flip pages. So I actually had that on, um, on my list for my birthday from my mother. I'm like, mommy, get me something good and good because I really want to get into my word more. And while I love the Bible app and there's things on technology, I just really think that being up close and personal with the Bible in itself and being able to just, you know, flip through and make marks and all that stuff is just going to be something that I'm really, truly going to enjoy and just help with my connection, um, you know, growing my connection with the yes, Lord. So I'm yeah. super excited about mm -hmm. that. But I do think that's just something that technology can't give me. Like I said, I love right. it. I use it. I'm right there yeah. with it. But man, that Bible, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, about. yes. With regular books. So that is so funny, Leah, that you brought that up because in church on, Kate, on Sunday, Kaylin, she asked to use my phone because I have the Bible app as well. And the pastor is throwing out scriptures. We're going to this verse. And she's like, mommy, can I use your phone? I can get to it faster in the Bible app than when I use the Bible. I said, <laughs> yes, baby, that is so true. I said, but we're going to get so familiar with this Bible that uh, you'll be able to turn it fast. And so I'm flipping through the Bible before I say, here, here it is. It's fast. <laughs> we are gonna get into this book okay we're gonna get into this book and they love books so they can read online and they love going to the library to fill up their backpacks as much as they can with books I love it because that was not me and I'm so grateful for it <laughs> but, <laughs> technology and with what you were talking about Leah with church I'm gonna go to the flip side of it is that now that churches are back open, mostly hopefully open, that a lot of people are still not back in church. So if you taking this as a dig because you prefer to do it at home, listen, check with God, see what he says about your heart. Cause he says, forget not the assembling of the saints. We online, yes. but to be in that building is something different. I'm sorry, I'm yes. not trying to preach to you family, but I'm just telling you what's in my heart. The church, people have not come back into the actual church building. And so that's also a flip side of what um, technology has done, how it has impacted the church. True. And you, to me, you, there's something that you don't get when you're not in the building. Yes. It's like, is you're you're missing you're missing the whole feeling you're missing of the, the that connection with God the 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 spirit coming through you the the blessings that you're feeling just just the interaction with Him you know it's it's something that is so different when you are just speaking online. It's the impact. Actually, it's a different right, impact, impact when you're in the place being in the house of the lord is such a different you know such a different way it's, it's not the same because you never know how he's going to move that day you don't know what is in store for everyone that day mm -hmm. and not being in the physical building it's like you you're missing your blessing of what comes through there that day yes and, and one more thing the same way with our homes as well yeah <laughs> I think it's the same way, you know, when we don't, I'm so sorry, y'all, this baby's making me cough. Okay, no, not the baby. Um, but I, I agree, you know, in our homes, when we don't limit the um, the interaction our children have 
with technology, then we miss that opportunity to really gather together, to really get to know each other, that same kind of fellowship that we want in our church. You know, that's the same kind of fellowship we should desire in our homes. I know me and my husband are terrible about it. Like he'll come to the table. He's a long day at work. I, most of the babies are in bed a lot of times. And so he'll come and he's just ready to relax with whatever he's already got in his ear and eat his food and go to bed. And I'm like, well, you got your thing going in your ear. I'm not fooling with you. I'm put mine, put mine on too and go somewhere, you know? And so <laughs> then we're done. And so we haven't had communion or fellowship or anything, you know? And it's really one of those things that, that you know, it's just so sad and heartbreaking. So, you know, you don't want that for your family, for your household, for your home. You really want to be able to commune and fellowship because the kids grow up so fast. You know, things happen in life. It changes. True. So you want to just enjoy those opportunities. You know, we were blessed to have technology during the pandemic so yes. the kids could continue to go to school. They could continue to learn and interact and things like that. But, yeah. you know, now we have to pull back in some of those reins and say, okay, yes. guys, you got to cut yes. it off. You got to limit. You got to do that. So. It's important. Yes, we have to be so intentional about not letting it, about not allowing it to control us. So for us, for me and my husband, we don't bring our cell phones to the table. And the kids, they we've been doing it for so long now, the kids pick up on it. So if we're sending a last minute text message while walking to the table and then we put our phone, then we come with our phone, the kids are like, I thought we're no technology at the table. And if we have <laughs> visitors over, they're like, we don't do our phones at the table. <laughs> Those are the rules of the table. Alone. Alone. They be like, we gotta go. And I love it. And another thing is like, even just having your phone on the table, even if you turn it face down, it's still a distraction because as soon yes. as it dings or pings or vibrates, you're, you're gonna like, you're gonna be tempted to reach for it. So just leave it in the living room, in the kitchen, and just let's just have this time where we don't have technology. It's us. A lot of families don't even sit down at the table for dinner. That's another subject. Yes. But let's. <laughs> Let's be intentional around those with those who are we, who we are with. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that's great. I love it because that's exactly how we started. We can't miss out on the people that are right there in front of us. The people that we interact with regularly is so important and it's so impactful to their growth to their development, you know, you'll be like, oh, I didn't know my child was doing that. Oh, I don't know where my kid got, why my husband wanted a divorce, why he did it, da, da, da. I mean, you have to interact. We all have to participate into this real life thing. You know, technology is great, but it's not real life. So family, with that being said, we are mm -hmm. super excited to take a quick break to enjoy this really great pearl. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi ladies, thank you for having me. Hello to all our beautiful viewers. So this pearl of the week is a spiritual pearl. I'll be talking about renewing our minds. So Jesus spoke of hell, Sheol or the Greek word Hades, which is translated in hell. And there's like two known facts I have for you is that one, hell is real. And two, it is a very unpleasant place. And I'm saying this guys, because the choices we make today, tomorrow, or the next day will determine where we spend eternity. And if I ask you guys, where do you want to spend eternity? Of course, we're going to choose heaven. No one wants to choose being in an unpleasant place. All right. So the choices, guys, it starts from somewhere. It starts with renewing our mind. Let's look at Romans 12, 2. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing and perfect will. So we have to renew our mind. And how do you do that? By knowing God's word. We have to know it, read it, study it, meditate on it. We have to stand on it. We have to apply God's word to our everyday lives. So what seed are you watering? Are you watering the worldly seed or are you watering your spiritual seed? That's the question. Also in... 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So if we're not reading God's word, then how are we getting our training? How are we, you know, being trained in righteousness? So we, we just have to renew our minds, guys. There you have it, ladies. Thank you for having me. Well, ladies, 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 that was great. Thank you, Sister Janelle. Fam, we hope that Pearl is gave you some good information to live by. So now, everyone, 
let's we're going to talk about the impact modern technology has on the children what is the pros and cons is it good for the kids i recently i did some research and um my research oh, let me pull it up let me pull it up sorry it says four percent of children in 2011 now four percent spent the majority of their time during the day on some kind of device by 2017 that number jumped to 35 percent now the american academy of pediatrics recommend that children from infants to 18 months should not have any kind of monitor time or any kind of device at all now, some say it's not good for their development. Um, you know, it's bad for their eyes. Yeah, like you're looking right now, Leah. <laughs> bad on the eyes. You know, because at that, that they're developing so much at the, those young ages. They said they don't recommend it, and they, you know, they do a big breakdown. So, like an hour for kids under under five a day, and then it gets a little more as they get older. I know a lot of families, a lot of parents, they have a lot of children, they're out there, you know, they trying to maneuver, they're working, they're trying to take care of the household, and mommy, 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 what do we do? Here, take it, just to keep them quiet. If it's not the TV, or it's not your cell phone, it's not an iPad, or some kind of device, keep them quiet. They're out of my hair, I'm trying to do things. Now, that could be a big disservice to the children. You know, there's, there's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons. You know, one major factor for me is it, it doesn't let the children learn social skills the way they should because they're all engrossed in whatever they're looking at on this device. They're just, you know, they're all into it to the fact that they don't know, they black out the world around them. They don't hear you, they don't see nothing, they don't know anything. All they know is that. And I remember my grandson was three, around three years old, and he was so into having your phone, you know, and being on it that he had to go to the bathroom and did not get up to go to the bathroom. And to me, that was just totally unacceptable. It was just totally unacceptable. When he seen me coming, because, you know, his brother snitched on him. And when he seen me coming, <gasps> Grandma said, I, said I, I was like, I was so done with him. I'm like, how do you let something stop you from going to the bathroom? You know, so what happened? The rest of his vacation, he spent another two weeks. He didn't look at a device. He didn't think about a device. I'm going to shut the device down because he thought I was going to tear his little butt up. But I, I did it to him where it hurt. I took it from him. So now you're going to learn. That doesn't come Ooh. before everything else. Listen, so. let me tell you, technology has taken out the best of the potty train, okay? I'm not even <laughs> going. It has taken out the best. Lord knows I have been a witness to them just being in it, and they do not move. I am familiar with family members whose children are much older, and they are on it, and they do not move. And when it happens, I mean, and they're much older. So it's just like oh it has gosh. taken out the best of them. I am telling you. And so I think that is that just speaks to the impact of it. That just speaks to how detrimental technology really is. You're thinking our children are so immature, right? They're so unprepared. Yes. So that's why they get involved and they block out the whole world and they can't hear you. And so then they're a danger to themselves because if something happens, something's going on, you're, oh, it's a fire, you're calling. And they're just totally engrossed, you know? So that's why it's really our job as parents to monitor, monitor, monitor the technology. Yes, it's and very I important. fully understand <laughs> when it says children under five, one hour, it's like not possible. Like it's not possible. I'm with this child all the time. I cannot live it to one hour of them only being functional because that's the only time. Like, but I think that it makes us so much better when I look at it from not that perspective, from another perspective. I think it makes us so much better because then you really have to interact with that child and you find yourself developing different characteristics and skills that you maybe normally wouldn't possess. Because right. now you're being more creative. You know, you're having to invent things to keep them 
keep their minds, Lord Jesus, right? Yep. Um, and one thing that I did hear about technology as well was that when children have so much of it, like they're watching TV and watching videos and playing all those games, they get in class and the classroom teacher isn't enough. Like it's, they're just bored. They're just over it because it's not as much stimulation mm -hmm. as what they were oh. getting from. And y'all, wow. we don't, that's, I can't even imagine that nightmare. So, you know, if your children are coming to school and they're hyped up from just all of this regular stimulus and you're telling them now they got to sit down, they have to pay attention. They have to focus. Yeah. They have to listen to a story. They have to, you know, understand and try to pick out, you know, instructions and comprehension and all that stuff. I don't know, guys. I don't know, but I think it's really impactful. So we we have yes. to really, as yeah. parents, be diligent about about how we deal with technology and our children. Oh, wow, that's a good point, Leah. I hadn't I hadn't considered that about it being too stimulating for yes. them when they go to school and have to listen to the teacher all day. That's that's interesting, um, but it makes it makes so much sense though. And so, but I read a an article and it was talking about how to encourage teens because like we talked about, it can hinder their socialization. So one thing that I think is good is to ask them, is to encourage them, the kids to pay attention to how they feel when using technology. This is more geared mm -hmm. towards the teenagers. Well, I guess whatever age they're on social media and interacting <laughs> now, um, it's, it's do a feeling gauge, how they feel when they're using it and think about how they felt before they started using it and how what they post or share, how does that make them feel and how they think mm -hmm. it's going to make the other person seeing it? How's it going to make them feel to right. just make them know that there are people on the other side of these machines. You're not just sending it out there that we still have to understand that there are people on the other side and they have feelings just like you do. So and again, that requires you to be engaged, yep. to participate, yeah. to know what's going on, to communicate, family. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. But Sorry, yes. parents. It hits the, other, the other factor is how about if they just took away technology? We didn't have technology anymore. No. Would that be a, a better benefit for our children no. and for us? No, I mean, no, I don't think, I don't think we can go back now. I think we've gone too far <laughs> to go back, but I definitely think we have to be more intentional about how we use it and who we are allowing to use it what age there has to be yes. a limit on it because and we got very lazy yeah. yes it did make us lazy lazy yes. parents yes. <laughs> and not, don't have to engage don't have to you know, know phone numbers and you it's used just... to have to know that you used to know your phone number your address you're like what girl Hold everybody's number so right look, i had to work i didn't have technology in my time <laughs> right yeah, and we can't change everything for technology either. No. Just at the end of the day, you know, we love it. But there are some things like a good old Bible, a good old fashioned good book. book. There yes. are some things about coming Church. in the sanctuary, assembling together, right? That we cannot change, family. <laughs> yes. well, come on in the room and let's come on in the room. <laughs> birthday well. parties, they're great online, but come on to the house, yeah. come on to the park for these birthday parties. But hey, it's time for question of the week. Question of the week. Yay. Question of the week. And I got it. Hey, I got the question of the week. So this week's question is, in the story of the Good Samaritan, he helped and paid the care and upkeep for a complete stranger on the streets. Would you do that today? Why or why not? In the story of the Good Samaritan, he helped and paid the care and upkeep for a complete stranger on the street. Would you do that today? Why or why not? Yes, yes I would I would want to do that this day and time. You know, but people, people, I love y'all family. So just put in the chat what you feel, what you feel from your heart. I love y'all, but sometimes it's difficult to try to yes. help somebody and assist somebody and they're a little you know, resistant, but if they weren't resistant and mm -hmm. they wanted help, they were willing and open to help and assistance. Yes. Oh yeah, sign me up. I don't have an issue with it at all. I love y'all. I love you. I got y'all. Yes. If if they <laughs> if if it was the sincereness in it, they really needed this help, not trying to con you out or something. You know, some people, oh I'm hungry. Here I'll go buy you food. Oh no, no, no. I need I need the money. Well you're not hungry. Cause if you hungry, I must be like thank you. Yes. <laughs> 
And yeah. can I get that package, you know, that meal? You know, that, but other people are just trying to con people out of money. And this is where you got to go to God and, you know, ask them to put it in your heart. Is this the right thing? Should I do this for this person? You know, is, do they sincerely need it? Or well, sometimes they'll tell you do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. And I had an in- instance where, oh, shoot, we're out of time. So I was in Walmart parking lot and it was a lady with her kid. They walked up to me and I'm always gullible for kids. So she's like, oh, we need money to help pay for our hotel. So of course I'm like, okay, there's a ton of people out here. So I give her some money for a hotel. And then a guy comes running up to me and I'm, my guard is instantly up again. And he's like, she's a scam. She's a scam. She's not supposed to be out here. I'm on the phone with the police right now. I was like, well, Lord, have your way. I'm done. Is it? (laughs) I was like, there's nothing I can do. I gave her the money. I'm not going to chase her down and take it. But God knows my heart and he knows what her intentions were with that money. So I I did it. I gave helping from my heart. So whatever she did with it, that's that's on her. If you call the police and he get it back, I don't know what y'all doing with it. But I'm sorry. It's time for the conclusion. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think that's the perfect answer for anybody who was going to say, no, I don't want to help anybody. That's the perfect answer. (laughs) All right, family. So we have talked about technology. We have enjoyed sharing this technical moment with you guys. We love you. We hope that you guys remember some of the very helpful um, hints that we've included for today. So just take your time. Don't abuse it, but do enjoy it. We love you. And until next Tuesday for Mom's Pro. Bye. Mom's Pearl.